Welcome to Our Kids, sponsored by Jefferson County Public School. I'm Westport Middle School correspondent Mandy Simmons. This May, we take a look at how JCPS has coped with the COVID-19 global pandemic. I am working on the fifth grade consumer review where um, you write a review on um, one of your favorite games, restaurant, TV shows, book, or a store. And right now I'm reading this really good series called The School for Good and Evil. So um, I'm writing a review on why you should read that series. I'm doing this one, create a drawing or painting. Create a drawing or painting just by using lines, shapes, and colors while listening to music. Let the emotions the music makes you feel guide your crown or paintbrush. Which cool. colors work best for each emotion? Which types of lines work best for each emotion? Oh, and what have you created here? Scared right here um, mm -hmm. is the purple. Mm -hmm. Sad is all of the, this one. And all of the blue ones. This is our basement. We've turned into a little uh, makeshift classroom as we're trying to teach here. Uh, this is Reese. She's in fifth grade in JCPS, and Avery is a second grader in JCPS. So we set up some desks and we're trying to stay on a schedule where we have some exercise in the morning and uh, a few assignments. But lucky for us, their teachers are sending us these great assignments that we're trying to complete. They're all on Google Classroom and they sent home a bunch of stuff too. So the resources out there are outstanding and we've been trying to incorporate some fun lessons too. I like learning about um, sentence structure because um, it prepares me for sixth grade since it's a sixth grade standard. So uh, I will be more prepared for sixth grade. Yeah, we did some diagramming sentences um, I had to Google some of the math problems, but I'm doing my best. And Avery, what have you learned that's been fun so far? I've learned 10% tips, 20% tips, and 15% tips. Yeah, I had to put tips on to check. So a little real world math situation. We're doing the best we can here. Stay safe. What's happening in our schools right now, we have our school leadership teams that are collecting all the Chromebooks that are in their buildings. They're bringing them all to a centralized location and they'll then be distributed from there. We have roughly uh, 400 Chromebooks here at Cameron Middle School. And this morning we're preparing to get those ready for the district to come out, uh, sanitize those, get those ready for our students uh, for use over the next uh, 15, 20 days. Well, right now the idea is to just get all the Chromebooks together. We have so many different schools, so we're really narrowing it down to 50 schools that have the most Chromebooks across JCPS, and we're asking our leadership teams in the schools to get all the devices together so we don't have to go through classroom, classroom to classroom to find each of the Chromebooks. So we're gathering them together, and then from there, we're still charting out our plan for exactly how we're going to ask families to request a Chromebook and how we're gonna distribute the Chromebooks. As a principal and JCPS employee and a father of a JCPS student, um, it's essential that all of our kids, whether you're a Camer student, um, a Lasseter student, a uh, Great House Chirac student, that you have accessibility and availability to any materials we have because we are one district, we serve all students of all needs, um, and that's our goal. Right now, our plan is to, to reach out to our families who are on free and reduced lunch and to see if they need a Chromebook first. So we have about 25,000 Chromebooks that we're anticipating that we will give out to our families who need a device at home. So as we move to non-traditional instructional days across JCPS coming up uh, April 7th, all the information mostly would be primarily housed online. Um, so we want the students to have access to a device so they can get into, say, Google Classroom, and they can communicate with their teachers, they can get their assignments, they can turn their assignments in. So that's why we want kids to have a device at home, and that's where the Chromebooks will come in. Hello, 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 how are we doing? We're at Rangeland Elementary today, and we're offering breakfast and lunch to our students and any child in the community um, during this school shutdown. All right, and this is the breakfast? Breakfast is a shelf-stable kit, so it would have maybe cereal, graham crackers, a juice, we add a milk. And then the lunches we're actually preparing at the Nutrition Service Center. Here's your lunch. Parents can drive through and pick up a breakfast and a lunch 
for each child that is in their car. We actually are offering meals at 35 of our JCPS sites, and we're also doing eight of our mobile stops that we do during our regular summer program. We are very thankful that KDE allowed us to serve breakfast and lunch at the same time. That normally is not allowable. And of course, we're also emphasizing non-congregate feeding. So uh, parents or guardians can drive through and pick up meals or students can walk up and pick up meals. Have a good one. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. In Jefferson County Public Schools, 67% of our students are eligible for free and reduced meals. So they rely on their school breakfast and school lunch when they are in school. That need doesn't go away if they can't come to school. So we want to make sure that they have the option to get a healthy breakfast and a healthy lunch while schools remain closed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're at Middletown Elementary School. What we're doing here is disinfecting the school while schools are closed. Plant operators here along with the area supervisor and they're using hospital grade uh, disinfectants to sanitize and disinfect the school while everyone's out. They're disinfecting all surfaces with the hospital grade disinfectant just like we do every day at Jefferson County Public Schools. We, every day we treat it as if there are viruses in the school. So we're kind of doing the same thing we're doing, we're just doing a deeper cleaning of it and more detailed. We're also following through with electrostatic sprayers, which is more efficient than what they're doing as far as the regular disinfecting. It covers more area, hard to reach spaces and it disinfects all those surfaces. Right now we're currently 62% through all of our building sites that we have for JCPS that are disinfected and sanitized with the electrostatic sprayer. Our department is outstanding. The workers, you can't say enough about them, all the way from the custodians. They're the most diligent workers you know, I've been around. They're here on a nightly basis, uh, working hard. Plant operators are working diligent. Area supervisors are working hard during the day and nighttime supervisors are working through the night also probably the cleanest buildings in the city. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Card. Oh, how sweet. This one's oh, from Lily. Lily. We're at Thank You Nuts. Why'd you read Thank that You Nuts? So uh, because they're passing out lunches. Oh, how sweet. Yeah. You're just trying to be sweet? Yeah. yeah. What would you like to say to these ladies? Thank you. We have some thank you notes that we received today from some of our students that go here at Middletown and uh, they were thanking us for all of the hard work and standing outside in the cold, serving them and in the rain, serving them their meals while they're out of school. And tomorrow, guys, from, uh, according to the weather report, we're gonna probably be at right under the porch. And they love the food. They have really looked forward to it and they come over every day. Your staff, thanks for all the food that you guys have provided. It's a great help. I am very thankful for your service and I am thankful that you guys are willing to stand outside in the cold for us. <laughs> Sincerely. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We're at Chance Elementary. We are missing the kids so much because of not being in school. In the meantime, we decided to do a parade. We're going to hopefully put some smile on some kids' faces today and also bring joy to my heart. So we are looking forward to it. I'll probably be in tears driving down the road, seriously. We're gonna leave our bus circle and follow the bus routes and go to children's like neighborhoods and wave and say hi and just let them know that we're missing them. We love it. We love our TNC family. We know how much our teachers care and this is just one of the many ways they show it. So we're excited. Yeah, it's fun. You and that's why I get to see my teachers. My little cousin came knocked on the door. He said, my school is having a parade. <laughs> so I thought it was pretty neat to come out. They're getting lonely. They're getting sad. They're missing us. And really, they want to be in school. They want to learn. My own kids are saying the same things. I think all kids want to be in school where their families or extended families are. And teachers miss them just as much. We certainly rather be in the classroom than at home. And we tremendously miss these children. And so that's why we're all here today. My daughter talks about one of her teachers in particular. I will say Mr. H is what they call him. And she call, um, keeps in contact and texts him all the time and makes sure that her grades are on point and whatever um, task needs to be completed, whatever assignment. More than anything, we want them to know that we miss them. We love them. We think about them all the time. And we want to make sure that they're safe in the air with their families, but knowing that school will be back in, hopefully sooner than later, and we will we'll wait for them. It was amazing. It was really good. I really liked it.
Do you all miss your teachers? Yes. yes. What would you like to say to them? I miss you very much. I love you very much and I wish I could have come back. You're the best. Are getting together supplies that we are going to donate. JCPS is going to donate to the health department to help distribute out into the community to our partners, business partners that have needs. Our safety and environmental office since the H1N1 crisis several years ago really has been collecting supplies and um, having to have available in the case that we had a, another pandemic event. The governor has asked for communities to step up as communities and to partner and we feel like these resources are very important to be out in the community. Not only do we have what safety and environmental program has diligently been working together but our career and technical education. They have been collecting from all our labs at our high schools across the district and they've gathered supplies to donate as well. This situation just evolves daily. I mean, we hear the governor's updates and we know that there's um, lots of changes happening on a daily basis. We know that the N95 masks are in shortage and need to be in the hands of providers. And we know our healthcare facilities are in desperate need for any kind of masks. And so um, as a district, the, we have a district pandemic planning team, safety and environmental just felt like it's important to get these into the hands of the people that need them. Those people who are on the front lines doing the work with the patients. Stay tuned, we have more stories coming up. JCPS serves over 100,000 students, and with that, a lot of waste is generated. We need to do our part to recycle because it conserves natural resources, helps the environment, and saves money. When we recycle, we put less coal and gases into the power plant, which reduces the amount of toxins in the atmosphere. We are JCPS, and we recycle. Yeah! Welcome back to Our Kids, sponsored by Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Ballard High School correspondent Haley Childers. These are unusual times with school buildings being closed across the country. Learning is happening a little differently. Hello, my name is Jennifer Geddes and I am the librarian at the Phoenix School of Discovery. This is a piece um, that is to make a face shield. Uh, there's a shortage right now uh, for all of our medical workers for PPE, which is their personal protection equipment. This was made with a 3D printer out of PLA, which is just plastic, and the machine basically melts the filament plastic and then prints this out layer by layer. A few weeks ago, uh, we received an email 
about a 3D printing workshop that UofL was going to host here at the Amist Center. Right before COVID-19 showed up on our doorstep, we did a National Science Foundation workshop to teach them how to use 3D printers in their classroom for STEM activities. They showed us how to use the 3D printers and um, some of the technicalities of 3D printing in the hopes that we would then take the printers back to our schools and teach our students about that job skill because there is a need for that in the market. And um, it just is a coincidence now really that we're needing 3D printers to make these pieces. We are offering a what's called a barrier protection from droplets or mists. It's sanitized and then it's packaged and it's shipped. When we started getting more orders coming in than we could handle, we sent out an email to them and said, hey, can you print some of these for us? I was able to get into the school and bring the 3D printer to my home, and that is where I've been printing. And just every two and a half hours, one piece finishes up, I take it off and start a new one. This is gonna make it so real for our students when we get back to school and we are no longer printing things that are just cool or cute projects. It's real life, it's helping others, it's paying it back, paying it forward, not only to help UofL, which is where we got the 3D printer from for free, um, but also paying it back to our medical workers who are very crucial at a time like this. And uh, we can take this, this lesson and this community involvement and teach them so many different lessons beyond even just the technicalities of 3D printing itself. All finished, ready to start the next one. We have been able in two weeks time to get 25,000 Chromebooks from schools. Uh, rather than having them sit there, uh, we wanted to get those shipped out to our students. We have uh, sanitized, uh, we've prepped those. We actually are printing the labels today. We're going to send a first shipment tomorrow. There'll be another shipment next week. So once we put the labels on, uh, we're organizing those by zip code. And then the uh, post office will be shipping those out. And um, they'll actually go to the home and someone will need to sign for those once they get to the guardians. What I'm doing is I'm taking the household ID that we have on each label and I'm just associating the asset tag for the machine with that household ID. So we're tracking what uh, households are getting which machines. It, it has been monumental. A lot of people have depended on our technology department and they have just stepped up and you know it's really united our, our JCPS family and our team to be able to do that. So, uh, but most importantly is a lot, of, a lot of families are dependent on us to get these devices in the hands of kids. We're getting the Chromebooks ready for the students to be able to use. And I'm at Hawthorne Elementary Grade School. Starting next week, we're gonna do the NTI learning online. So I'll be teaching 45 students online starting Tuesday, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, it just makes me proud. Of, it makes me proud of the people who are, are continuing to do the work and continuing to uh, put these in the hands of students. And then it makes me excited when you see all the work and the instructional, the content that's gonna be delivered to our students through NTI. It's just top quality. And so to be able to see what that, ha that part has been delivered in, in just a short amount of time, plus the hardware that's gonna be in the hands of our kids, it's really exciting. I look at this as a disruptive innovation for our district. So this is really, it's not that uh, something we would want to have, uh, have, have done this quick, uh, but it is gonna actually catapult us into uh, online learning. So this is just helping us to get to realize how important that is now. Today we do. <laughs> My name is Janine Hogan. I am a first grade teacher at Maupin Elementary School. I, I miss them every day. Every, I just, just the hugs, the social interaction, the, the mistakes, the growth. I miss it all. I miss it all. It's been interesting. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, just research on my own, just trying to get more acquainted with Google Classroom and digital resources that we are going to be using uh, to create that online learning for our students. I'm trying to just keep contact with my families and uh, my students and just let them know, you know, we're all in this together. Today has been a lot of meetings, a lot of check-ins, just going over what the expectations are for general education teachers and special education teachers and how we are going to get this digital platform um, available to our kids. The meetings have been, uh, they've been informative. They have also have helped with some different um, Google 
uh, webinars that we can attend just to get us again more sharpened on you know what Google Classroom is because it, some teachers this is their first time actually implementing Google Classroom so you know just like the parents are learning uh, you know us teachers were learning too so I'm very confident in my in my kids I'm very confident in them I'm very confident in my parents um, we all have a really good relationship and I'm, I'm blessed with a really great class this year I really am my students you know I, I just see what are you doing how are you doing I miss you I hope you miss me uh, what are some things you missed that we used to do in class? What are some things you would like for us to do online? A classroom isn't a classroom unless your kids are also inputting what they believe should be, you know, brought into the space. You are loved, you are missed, and we are going to continue this learning together. It's a process. We're going to do it together. I'm Brian Rich, and I'm a social studies teacher at Ballard High School. Today, I have already had two Zoom meetings before this one. Um, I have sent an email to the parents of all my students on Infinite Campus. I have taken um, study materials from the College Board for my advanced placement exams upcoming and uh, divided up review assignments for my students, which I will post on Google Classroom this afternoon. So that's been it so far. And so I've heard probably from about three quarters of my students maybe 80% over that time, because I know a lot of my kids are helping take care of younger siblings. I know a lot of my kids are battling for Wi-Fi access with parents who are working from home right now. So I'm trying to be as flexible as possible. So for example, whenever I did have some Zoom meetings with my kids to discuss content, um, I actually had multiple sessions at different times of day, and my kids could join any one of them if they were able to, regardless of, um, what time our normal classes or what period they normally have. And what I've discovered is that many students, while they're adept at social media, have no idea how to use any of the technology for school purposes. So they've struggled just as much as I have to learn. I'm really over the next couple of weeks reviewing content with my students and reviewing that specific kind of writing. So everything else has gone by the wayside. So I'm doing less work than we would be doing normally, but trying to make it meaningful and applicable to what we were gonna do anyway. So I'm having to do some things I've never done before. As I said earlier, I had never uploaded a video to YouTube until two and a half weeks ago. I had never used Google Classroom until three weeks ago. I have never done a lot of things until a couple weeks ago, but I'm excited to learn, I'm excited to try, and I'm excited to do whatever I can. And don't necessarily worry about the grade. I think a lot of times we get focused on grades. I think this is a lot about our emotional well-being right now. I think this is a lot about some normalcy in our lives. And so try your best, communicate, have a positive attitude. And this is certainly not what any of us thought we would be doing, but we can still have a positive outcome from all of this. And so I'm committed, and I know the other professionals in our school system are committed to making that happen for all of you. I want to say we miss you guys so much from Miss Young and all of our Auburndale crew. Thank you. Thank miss you. you. We are at Auburndale Elementary and we are about to start our staff car parade to come around and see families from Auburndale. We are going to cheer, honk, shout, wave to all the kids who are outside. Boost the spirits, let people come outside because it's a beautiful day out. Wave at a good distance to you all. I think at first it was like, oh, we're going to be off. And you kind of like get that, you know, snow day feel. But then at this point you realize how important it is to go to school every day and even go to work every day because you need that go outside, exercise, and keep your brain moving. I don't think you realize seeing them every day how much it boosts your spirits and not being able to see them just kind of makes you really miss being at school. Hey, Logan. Hey. Um, I want to tell them to stay strong, to keep their spirits high, and that their teachers are thinking of them every single day. Um, and good luck these next few weeks as we take on um, the NTI day. My name is Christian Mason. I'm a student at Jefferson Town High School and in an apprenticeship program at, uh, with Trilogy at Glen Ridge Health Center. My apprenticeship with Trilogy has been a fantastic experience. It's um, really preparing me for life in nursing. It's really given me an eye opening to direct patient care and it's something that I want to advance into. I help residents shower. I help I can feed residents. I help pass trays. I get daily weights of residents. I transfer residents from bed to wheelchair, wheelchair to bed, wherever. And I'm just there for the residents, honestly, for support, for anything they want to talk about. I have been doing most of the same 
direct patient care since before COVID-19. We're taking extra precautions by having respirate. We have to wear the respirator mask, the N95, as soon as we walk onto the campus. We're always doing good hand hygiene, but we're making sure to wash our hands extra to prevent the spread of any viruses. So our facility is closed to all public visitors, but um, I think it's made a difference in the residents because a lot of them can't see their family members and that upsets them. One thing that I've learned through this apprenticeship is patience because, um, I mean, since you're working alongside with patients, with other people, other humans, they can, it, it helps you learn patience. It's teaching me about patient care. It's teaching me about nursing a little bit, um, actual nursing. But honestly, it's just opening my eyes to the many other jobs that I want to go into. The encouragement that I want to provide is go into healthcare. Go, there's always, there's always going to be a job no matter where you go. You can live anywhere, honestly, in the world with it, with a healthcare job or a degree in healthcare. It's a really good experience, especially if you're a people person. You love being around people. You love helping them. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I love it. And this is Breckenridge Franklin Elementary. <laughs> We have a resource room here for blind and visually impaired students and we have about 14 students here and they come throughout the whole district and so today um, we're going in to get their materials for them to be able to have at home. Braille writers, canes, electronic braille note takers, magnifiers, magnification devices for them to be able to access materials through the NTI because those students use them here but they don't have them at home. We're gonna get those devices, get them dropped off to their homes and see some happy faces uh, receiving them so that they can actually participate in the TI like all the other students. I received multiple pictures, emails, comments from parents and teachers and students, hip hip hooray, waving, thank you, using their braille writers, using their tools at home. Tavion, much like other students, are learning at home and children who are blind and visually impaired obviously are not exempt from that. Um, so it's, a, it's really great for him to be able to use his accessible technologies and accommodations so that his learning is still effective, such as his braille typewriter, using, uh, they deliver braille paper, he has a monocular, um, and talking features on his iPad to simulate teaching with his, uh, with his actual teacher at home. We're getting all the same exercises that he does at school at home. Thanks to our team, every single parent, every single teacher commented, thank you, we have our devices now. I'm appreciative and I love all the support that he, he gets and it's, it's not only just a hard transition for him, but for me as well. So to help me be able to work with my son one-on-one, -on -one, it's, it's, it's kind of like the, the light of the day in a hard time. This is the ultimate test of our students, isn't it? That they're learning on their own how to use these devices at home. They're having a, a life test on using these skills to access content that their teachers have been working with them all year long. Thanks for watching our show. You can find entire episodes of Our Kids on our YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting our kids.